Hey guys, it's Keith, and welcome to Firewatch. I've been avoiding finding out anything about this game. A lot of people have been very specifically requesting me to play it, so I'm going in blind, and I don't even know what the story is, and I'm that, that's gonna be the proper experience, probably. This should be interesting. Oh, and, uh, I'm just gonna get immersed in the story and just keep going, so instead of the usual thing where I keep doing intros and outros for episodes, I'm just gonna play. And it's definitely not because I ran out of batteries for my timer or anything like that. It's definitely nothing unprofessional like that. That would be silly. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. Mouse is still on the screen. Oh! This is like a twine game? <laughs> this beginning part? She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you're Julia's boyfriend. Well, this isn't the start I was expecting at all. Okay. We can interact with objects. I would hope. <laughs> Hello? No one so far. We getting in here? Oh, can, I, can I climb up? Ooh. There we go. You did for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about every anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it to her, with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. So do you want the, the dog she loves or the dog that's awesome and named Shepherd? <laughs> You're gonna name it Mayhem? <laughs> it's a little, might be a little too far, man. Alright, you pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julie loves him. You love him too. Sorry, Shepard, jeez. 1979. You talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I should have some, a couple of idiots. That'd be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably the best if their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. I can tell this story ends well because we're alone in, out in the wilderness. Where's my- Oh no, we lost our pack in the wind! You should have tied it down! It's probably on my back already. Thoroughfare Trailhead. Hello, map. So... I assume we're up here because of the trailhead part. Probably heading south along Supply Drop. I don't see a giant UR here anywhere. I'm sure we can't get lost five seconds of the game, right? Don't forget to check in. <laughs> Learn to live with bears. 
Thurafell trail, trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Well, good thing that I'm a Let's Player. That means I've experienced 17 different lives and I'm totally prepared for this. Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 19 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. <laughs> you pose and flex like a He-Man. You look awesome. Oh. Well, this is beautiful. And maybe a little bit of Instagram the video game, but still. Alright. This game's a walking thumbnail or album cover for indie rock. <laughs> Two Forks Lookout Tower. Eight miles. I think when it does the one of those highlight screens, it's specifically because of other languages. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. But 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 fuck the dog. Julia yells, but gets flustered and she has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You can for you confront the attacker. You beat his goddamn face in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Should've got that shepherd, huh? 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. So do you let her take the job, but get separated from you? Or do you agree if she commutes back and forth? Long distance relationships, I'm sure that'll end well. Agree if she commutes back and forth. You'll ask if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulders three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a college on a colleague for bro uh, borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember. She had happily loaned them to him two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. This is interesting. We're on our own, so that may not be a great sign for Julia. There's the dumb drawing. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. 
She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason, and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days, you get the Julia who calls you a dope, and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell, her, you tell her family, they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. The guilt of having letting her leave for so many years. And then she gets stricken by the illness and then you don't want to leave her again. Maybe this is how he gets his mind off of it, by coming out here. It's definitely a change of pace. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college, bas college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point one and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. And then, presumably, we get Firewatch. And to the lookout tower, where I assume I'll be doing fire watching. What's this place like? I gotta look around a little bit, right? So ours run. I took a glim glimpse of the controls beforehand. Ooh. Looks like you could chop that tree down to make a bridge at some point, if that game has that kind of mechanic in it. It'd be a weird detail to see if it wasn't like that. Whoa! Was that the tree? I had the tiniest glimpse of a word on the screen. <laughs> anyway. Beautiful game, that's for sure. For me, it's not really about the next-gen graphics and having mind-blowing, realistic visuals. It's about how we can now do really colorful, beautiful games in really high resolutions and have them all run well and rendered perfectly. It's a really pleasant background. I don't know, until dawn has me worried about watchtowers. Is there anything stashed back here? Doesn't seem to be much going on around there. Probably over-exploring for the first part of the game. <laughs> Hello? Is this home? Hello, Two Forks Tower. 
There it is. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the job. I think I found her tower out there. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Alright. What do we got? Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Woo! Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's, what, six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing. Um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are those fucking fireworks? Fireworks? Oh, hello. I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Yeah, I see them. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Good password there. Secure. Shut up. Oh, we don't get to see her face. There's Dementia Girl. This photo forgot her face the way that she forgot the world. That's a pleasant thought, isn't it? <laughs> do I grab the... how do I grab the pack? Oh, there we go. Anything I need else in here? So the rope's in the supply place downstairs, of course, but should I be, like, grabbing a... I'll grab soap and take that with me. They'll never see it coming. No, it's it's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry, everyone. I am an idiot. Here we go. I keep wanting to hit shift to run. But that is how you answer the, uh... That's how you deal with the, uh... The radio. Alright. So we went in a circle here, but, uh... It was out the window right straight ahead, right? Let's see here. So that's where I am. Two forks look out. 
way up there seem to be where I was starting. That's where her lookout is, at least. Not entirely sure where we got in here originally. Some fireworks nonsense, though. There we go. That's a pretty clear line of sight. Let's put some of that stuff away. Oops. Stop, gotta stop trying to run with shift. So we're going west. That'll give us a, you know, a starting point. I'm immediately... <laughs> How did I get stuck halfway between Colat and Witness right here? Beautiful, colorful landscape that I'm running, running while I run around with a compass out. Probably less spooky ghosts attacking me this time, though. This is nice. Here we go, that must be the supplies. One, two, three, four. There we go. Ron, hey man, guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his it locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked hiking in the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back, Dave. Good friends. Oops. Do people lose their shit doing this job? There's a note that says a guy just left his post. It happens, yeah. You're not gonna pop your top, are you, Henry? I wasn't planning on it. A little information added to our map. Cool. What's it look like now? There we go. Ne nearby details have been added to our map for the uh, roads. That's a nice touch. That is a very nice touch. Where'd that note go? Did it just dump it? Oh well. There's the rope. Pinecone is mine. Or not. Granola bar? Fine, a cherry and almond granola bar. That's it? Let's eat it. I'm sure it's great at this point. What can go wrong? Uh, off screen eating. There's the note. Excuse me, let's put that back. Don't feel like a monster. What? I guess I just dump it, huh? Not a big fan of uh, putting it in a reasonable place. Oh I, oh, I can keep it. Let's do that. There we go. So at any point you can just whip out the radio to talk about something when it's noteworthy. It's an interesting mechanic. So I guess I, I think I missed out on some optional dialogue by not using it immediately right then. So let's take a look at which way I'm going right now. We're on path going west. So this should be somewhere towards Jonesy Lake, or at least in the path. Let's keep the radio out. I mean the uh not the radio. We'll keep my compass out just to make sure we're heading vaguely west the whole time. As if the constant stream of fireworks aren't enough of a clue. Well, this is a nice sight. You got that- you got that just slight, foggy... ...obscurity to everything that make, helps everything- helps it make- you know, make it clear that everything's really... ...really far away. All right, careful now. Shale's slippery. Careful. No, nope. no, no! Good start. Shale is a sedimentary stone of fine grain. It consists of silt and clay. And about three fourths of my ass now. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. Yes. Good advice there. Never would have figured that one out. I can zoom. That's a fun skill. I wish I'd buy on it, guys, in real life. It's handy. It's fine, just run it off. Run it off and you'll be all better. Oops, I lose it. Wow, there's a, a big rock outcropping down here near the lake. It's really something. Yeah, makes for good camping. There used to be a group of guys who would boulder out there a couple times a year. What happened to them? Dunno. 
Just stopped coming out. They probably all died. The end. Fun story. I'm staring at the big outcropping down here, but I'm not quite sure where to look for our uh, pyrotechnicians. Hmm. Maybe keep heading west toward the lake. There's our camp. It's probably a pretty decent starting clue. Howdy. No tent, just a campfire. Oh, look, they decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? Yeah, that'll get it. He taught that campfire lesson. Well, I put out their fire. Man, I would have named that forest fire something good, too. Hey, I can always restart it. Uh, no. I think your first instinct was the right one. I left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. He's brought to a good start. We're gonna be friends. Oh, shit. Ferret or Irish. Probably don't need this in my life right now. Oh, that was... <laughs> that was less than graceful. Yeah. The story seemed to almost imply that I had a drinking problem, so I feel like we don't need to exasperate that. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Well, that part's easy. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, sure am. Ugh, people are just the worst, aren't they? They're not great, no. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. Where are they, though? It's a little strange. Oh, is that something way back there? There's just more cans. What do you know? People with shitty manners drink shitty beer. What? You don't like a cold muskwell light on a hot day? No, no, I do. But then again, I didn't say my manners were any good. Better than these fucking litter bugs, though, that's for sure. This guy sounds weirdly like Campster slash Errant Signal from YouTube. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Well, uh, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. Yeah, that's all their clothes. No big deal. Well, that gives the narrows down to the lake, more or less. That is their bra. Alright, welcome to Awkward. And there's the radio. Yep. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Nudie drunk pyromaniacs. This'll end well. Uh, there are, uh, panties... Or what? I don't want to say that word again. Why? Because you're 12? There's a... Uh, ooh. Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? Come on. I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's... You know... Two? Yeah. I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. So they're just drunk and playing with sparklers nude in the middle of the lake. And now this will be weird. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. Well, this will be awkward. You gotta take it easy with the fireworks, all right? You ought to take it easy at the Sizzler Buffet. <laughs> Chelsea? What? He's just some loser out in the woods. I mean, he's brooding. Why do you guys think it's all right to just stare at girls? You don't know a damn thing about me. We know you're a peeping Tom. How long have you been standing over there? Oh my God, is that what you are? Mark me out. Ew! Can we just get out of here? Ew, totally. You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. Wow. 
Just the worst people. It's done. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. God, they have terrible taste in music. I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, hey, there's a trail to Two Forks Tower down here near the lake. Yeah, that's your tower. So I should go this way. Well, you're not climbing back up that slide. Decent point. Alright, well they think I'm a creep that's spying on them. Well, they're the ones that are out in public naked. They more or less walk into that themselves. Anyone who, walk in, anyone who walks in is instantly guilty at that point from their perspective. Alright, so we should be going back east then, right? I don't really feel like going for a swim. In fact, I don't know if I can go for a swim. Oh, hey! There's a nice little signifier of where you've been. So we want to go all the way down to Cash... Yeah, pretty much down to the end of the river to cache 303. Cave 452 should lead me back to Two Forks Lookout. That's straightforward enough. Alrighty. I'm all I'm all cool for uh, exploring a mapped out area of, the, of a forest for a few hours. It's a lot warmer here than it was in Colat, with less promise of me dying in a few hours the way that, that we did happen in that game. <laughs> Nothing about that game was a uh, Promising for my well-being. A few hints of Pride Rock or something so around here. I have a bit of a confession to make. What is it? Um, look, I was I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know. I just I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. Yeah, whatever. Well, I'll, um, you know, I'll try to make it up to you. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. Oh, I can see my tower from far away. Yeah, we experimented with hidden underground towers for a while, but we weren't really happy with the results. Oh, the sarcasm's not gonna get old. Not at all. Wait a minute, was... was that sarcasm? Shut up. Oh, we got weather. Not the best sign. All right, where are we? Where are we now? Looking at the total wrong part of the map. So we can continue down the river, or we can try to go. No, there's no place going upslope here. Can I go this way? Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning. It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and. Try not to get hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not going to strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? Maybe he just thought that he needed to take the hint at that point. <laughs> Seven was not his lucky number. All right. There we go. Probably no real, real reason to take supplies out of this thing, but I can copy down information. Get a nice detailed map. Yeah. What's this thing? I can't look at that. All right. There's a horn. There's a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone, and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. Just felt like putting it around? Alright. Whoa. You don't like putting things back in a reasonable fashion, do you? Ugh, take that. Okay, we're now getting further away from putting it back in. There we go. Ah. Nice. Nailed it. We have a flashlight now. 
Leave the antler here for now. Could always come back for it. But just grabbing every single thing we find around there just seems unreasonable. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. Used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. God damn it. This cave is gated off. It's to stop Spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... Maybe its mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, sorry, Hank. Hello! I bless the rings down in Africa! Ooh. I have no regrets. <laughs> Alright, let's have a little bit more luck with Verticalia this time around. Come on. A little bit. There we go. It is. Definitely dealing with an accelerated time scale here. It's getting dark quite very quickly. Oh. There's some guy out here. Some guy? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I I don't think so. Henry, there's there's something I something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's 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 madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. Yes, shadowy figures, what can go wrong? It's definitely not a game or a movie where they highlight a piece of story where something's <laughs> going to happen. So nothing to worry about. All right, he's capable of basic actions, good to know. Otherwise, we would be in trouble otherwise. So I believe that's probably the way back. Right? Looks like it. That dude went over here, so I'm kind of curious. Can I head that way? Was he up on... was he right here? I was going up there. He would have been around here. Is there like a cave? Right there? I don't think so. It's just a cliff. Let's see what's up here. Let's see if we can get some evidence of where this guy went. Turn on the flashlight. For what little help it does. Both directions might just loop to the same spot though. Hopefully these batteries last. Yeah, they both totally go to the same place. Alright. Wherever that guy is, we're probably not going to see him unless he went to my tower. Which will be extra weird. Until then, enjoy these climbing animations. While you continue the wait for Mirror's Edge 2. Probably a good thing I grabbed the flashlight. It looks like it's going to get considerably darker. Wow. We transitioned to full starlight now. I think I've encountered Minecraft days that are actually longer than this. Trail isn't closed anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I took care of the blocked path. Um, it was backbreaking, but 
you know, anything for the service. Well, thank you. Anytime. I feel like I just created a danger for somebody by going this way. Oh no. That sign should probably be stopping people from getting hurt. Oh well. First day on the job, already causing potential fatalities. It'll be an exciting summer. Is that a stand-up? You know, I don't think there's any fictional character I hate more than Forrest Burns. Henry, as an employee of the Forest Service, that is treason. Yeah, well, he really freaked me out as a kid. He inspired me to spend the bulk of my 30s keeping the wilderness safe. A shrink would have a field day with you. Ugh, thanks, Mom. What kind of name is Forrest Burns, anyway? Well, that would be a pun, Hank. A glorious pun. I went to junior high with a guy named Royal Butts. Royal? Butts. <laughs> I didn't think anyone had been named Royal since the 1850s. Forrest Burns intensifies. Well, Royal's mom, Flo, was a bit of a trendsetter. Flo Butts? Oh man, that's even worse. Yeah, well, it's still better than Forrest Burns. Um, so it's uh, just the outhouse then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one at least. And, uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep. It doesn't go through much gas and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... What about my hair dryer? Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. Well, they're getting along well enough, at least. We'll see how they deal with each other like 30 days in. When I was in field camp for geology, that was like, that was the breaking point. We start getting closer to 30 days in, everyone's but the typewriter's not supposed to be down here. Uh... What can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell did... You should get inside. Fuck me. They come up and sabotage my tower. They do not get the they don't get the idea that I work here. I think if they made it this far, they'd figure that part out. Oh, come on. How do I report vandalism? Do I have to stand in the right spot? There we go. Someone broke in. Hey, what? It just, they wrecked the place. Threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker! Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. This is pretty bad. They ruined my window. Actually, most of the stuff doesn't seem like it's really that... Ah, uh, they threw some clothes around. Come on. Wait, where's the family photo? Hey. Uh, not acceptable. Okay, I put in a call. That was fast. Yeah, well, do you have any idea who could have done this? Maybe that guy I saw in the canyon, but I don't know why the fuck he'd want to mess with my stuff. Well, I'll have the rangers keep an eye out for a man hiking on his own and question him if they find him. <sighs> I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some deranged hiker going after lookouts? Great. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm gonna call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since... I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. I need you to feel safe out here. Don't worry about it. Oh, you can protect yourself, huh? I've done it before. Okay, tough guy. They were just scummy about this. Maybe it's the guy that lost his mind. There's supposedly a guy that lost it at some point, or it's the girls taking revenge. Though how they would find the spot so fast is weird.